open air, you do a nasally thing. Let's see if I can. If you can hear it's it. It's muscle memory. And so usually if I get into a pattern, then I, let's see if I can do it again. Are you ready to go? Oh, I thought we are live right now. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is what it's like working with Jerry. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's the Positively Petland Show, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock on 800 KXIC. Having fun. And we are joined in studio by Ron Soulsrud, the co-owner of Iowa City Petland. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. And so, uh, been in radio for a little while, a few months. And apparently, <laughs> I go on before I before I go on air, I do a little nasally thing. I yeah, a little I, oinky, you know, piggy kind of sound. I think it's clearing the phlegm and the allergies yeah, out of the back out. of my throat. Yeah. But <laughs> you're the only one that ever brings it up to me. I guess I've been doing it for a while, but. Anyway, uh, how are we this week? Life is beautiful. I did get into uh, some poison ivy or something I'm very allergic to in the woods again, and it's down behind our house. And I don't know if you're here. You, I got stuff going on. Yep, that's poison ivy. And it's just nasty. And God, don't wish this on an enemy. It, it hurts. Baking soda and water, it's, man. Is that the, the key? Well, does that, is that temporary relief? It's just to take away the itching so that you don't spread it. I have found a cold pack works very good. Yeah. So I, I have think... it at night. I just wake up, go get a cold pack and start putting it on the different arm areas that I got this coming out. And you know, it's that time of year, especially when it's, it's this hot. Once you get that oil on you, it is, it can, and it stays with you for so long. It does. It does. And I had a buddy who had got it so bad. He had it around his eyes and he had oh. to go on steroids and pregnant zone to, to be able to combat it from the inside because it was so bad. Wow. But this is the positively pet <laughs> show, not the medical hour with Ron souls rude, but uh, I've got problems. <laughs> I'm sorry that you, uh, I'm sorry that you got into that. I feel bad for you, but what's the breed of the week? <laughs> Moving on. What's the breed of the week? It is the Bichon Frise. Is this the right breed for your family? We're going to go into, you know, shedding versus non-shedding. We're going to hypoallergenic, you know, that whole term. We're also going to talk about, Hey, what kind of a, personality are these Bichon Frises. So we'll go through that. Then we're going to go into housebreaking, not how to break the house, but how to potty train your dog and then train your dog uh, so that you have a dog that you love so much because everything works just right. It's important to have a dog that you love, not the one. Even that more so. We all love the dogs We in the cats and all that kind of stuff, our pets. But I am telling you, there are different levels of love. And when everything's working right, you love that pet even more. I think it's the same thing with the relation, per, the people relationships in, within our life. It can when be. they get on our nerves, I don't like you as much right now. You know, kind of a thing. I, I learned this a long time ago. Unless you're recording a live radio show with them and then you really don't have a choice. Yeah, then you got to. Not that, is I, that what you're doing. Not that right? I'm relating this to anything in my personal <laughs> life, but it's, I got to put up with Let's this say guy. hypothetically you were to get on my nerves. There's not much <laughs> I can do about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not professionally, at least. No, I'm. I'm glad we have that relationship. <laughs> I interrupted you. What were you saying? Then we're so we're going to do the housebreaking thing. Uh, I got nine tips that we're going to go through, and then we're going to talk about little gimmies. It's one of the best treats out there in our store. Uh, we sell the most of these little gimmies, and we're going to learn how treats are your number one way to communicate with your dog, and how that's supposed to work. And that's all coming up next. Are you ready for the amazing pet story of the I week? I am. This is, uh, this is a hand-picked one just to show the quirkiness. It's not so oh, much amazing, that. but just the kind of quirkiness of our pets. It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. He's a quirky guy. You like him, don't you? Yeah. Tom was named after Tom Cruise. This is a peeping Tom cat. Tom... <laughs> Tom was named after Tom Cruise, and there is one thing he loves to do. It's watching my neighbor next door in her hot tub. She what? noticed him about a year ago, just sitting on the fence watching oh, her. She uses crazy. her hot tub a lot because of back problems. No matter what time of day or night, Tom is outside perched on the fence with his head just peeking over the boards, and he's always <laughs> watching her. The neighbor does take some comfort that Tom is always there and said, I like it that I have my own private bodyguard and responded, oh. you're the only one I know to have a going on relationship with a peeping Tom. And so to all of our Tom cats out there that enjoy peeping, that is our somewhat amazing kind of quirky pet story. That was a little different the there. 
I she enjoyed it though. Is she said that's okay? I'm not. It did not say what. Uh, it did not say if she was clothed or anything like that. Well, right, that was. Immaterial. I mean, that's. I'm just still just inferred. Uh, but yeah, can you imagine every single time you do something, just looking over and seeing two little beady eyes looking over the boards at you? Yeah, that would be a little bit unnerving. A little bit, although you know, I guess I would say, oh, it's a cat. I would get out of the shower and my great Dane would like look away in shame. (laughs) (laughs) I would would embarrass her and she would be like, dad. (laughs) (laughs) I think I've seen the same reactions in my house. I think though the reaction on the shower side for our dogs are, you're not putting me back in there, are you? <laughs> they don't want to get a bath. And you're tr- so they're like, you're trouble child. Yeah. As soon as the shower goes on, they like run out. Like, nope, I'm not going in there. So. Yeah. So uh, we uh, just recap the uh, breed of the week. And then what else are we going to be talking Deshaun about? Sean Frise, right. housebreaking, and little gimmies in that order. What are gimmies? I don't know. It's a treat. Little gimmies. Oh, the oh, they, that's the that's the treat of the week. All yeah, right. the name of the treat is little gimmies. Before we get into the second segment, what are your hours this week, Ron? We are open today, Sunday, from noon until six. Every other day of the week, we are open from ten a.m. until nine p.m. But today is Sunday, so we are open from noon until six. Um, you can come in, take advantage of, gosh, play with the, all the pets. That's what we're all about. That is the, our founder of Petland 50 years ago said, I want people to come in contact with these pets so that, one, the pets get socialized, but two, the people get to find out what works best for them. And so we continue that on today. You can tell in our store, gosh, we're all about playing with the pets. So come on in and play. If you have a little dog or a cat, um, bring them in for a $5 nail trim. You cannot beat a $5 nail I'm trim. I'm so on that one. And then we have a buy 10, get one free on, on all of our cat and dog food. We track it for you. We got it under your account uh, every single time. And then you get that 11th one for free. And that is so cool. Like, party balloons come down when it happens because everybody's so happy about giving you a free one so that is what we do on our store positively petland show on 800 kxic more on the way Do you know the reference of a canary in a coal mine? I know what they were used for. Get out of the mm-hmm. coal mine. Mm-hmm. That was the first noxious gas detector. You looked over and you saw the bird dead? Run. Run. Run! I think there's a Pink Floyd reference there. Run like hell. Is that what it says? Pink Floyd. The wall. There's a song on there that says "Run Like Hell." He uses hell in it. Mm -hmm. I am just a poor boy. All right, ready to go? Hold on for just a second. I'm gonna eat my cookie. So in 20 minutes, my stomach doesn't start growling. Yeah, you can hear it on the radio. You could not hear it on the radio. Dang, that's good. I am waiting across. Where was that reference that I said cut out? Okay, so yeah, no. a good there okay <clears throat> here we go segment two do that thing <clears throat> <laughs> it wasn't that bad there was a whole theme that just went on there here we go now i'm recording are you ready to go are you ready i am it's the positively petland show on 800 kxic iowa city's news and sports station and as every Sunday morning, 
We are joined in studio by Ron Solsrud from Iowa City Petland over near the Iowa City Marketplace, Lower Muscatine Road. You know where they're located, and they open at noon today. And uh, what's the breed of the week this week, Ron? The Bichon Frise. Frise. Sounds very French. Yes. Was that a giveaway? Yes, and you just answered the question. I knew it was coming, so I thought I'd get out ahead of it. But it, you'll find out, actually, that that's only part of the origins of the Bichon Frise. Or we, a lot of people just like say, saying Bichon Frise. I was so, going to say I'm more... I'm more familiar with that pronunciation than right. The, it's the American way. I'm I'm good with either than one. the elitist frisee frisee frisees. Well, it's the uh, dox here. If you didn't know, doxon dox dox doxon is the proper way of saying. I actually asked a German, uh, uh, or what, what do you call it? a native German who had the German accent, and I said, "Can you please say the name of this breed, Dachshund? And I went, all right. There it is. It's not Dash Hound. It's not, what are some other ones? There's some other ones out there. It's Dachshund. Boston Terrier? <laughs> it is pronounced Boston, Boston Terrier. Terrier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, are you going to tell us about the breed of the week? Or yeah. Just oh, gonna, okay. We're just going to gonna gaze at me. <laughs> I was letting you keep on going. <laughs> Nothing like dead air that is just riveting for live radio. <laughs> or even recorded radio. At you, <laughs> at you. All right, we cleared those pipes out. The word Bichon has been used for centuries to describe certain types of small dogs who evolved into today's Bichon Frise. These dogs originated in, and this is where it got a little more, a little interesting, in the Mediterranean region, so in that area, um, and descended from large curly coated water dog known as Barbette. I did not know that. Now you do. Spanish and Italian sailors took them along on voyages as companions and items of barter, which is also a reoccurring... There's so many reoccurring themes with dogs, like how they originated and all that kind of stuff. And ships played a large part in the different breeds we have today because people in different ports would see the dogs come over on the different ships from the different lands, countries, and they would go, oh, I like that dog. And then they would mix it in with the dog that they have in their port. And now you that's the origins of a lot of different breeds. The uh, Labrador Retriever is exactly the same thing, but that was up in the, where is the Labrador Retriever originating from? You got it. Remember, this is the, you just like went. Memory Woo. retention part of it. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Ne Netherlands? Netherlands, that's yeah. right, because I, yeah. I pulled it out of thin Yeah, and I was like, how did you get that that's one? Why, that's why it, was a brain, it, it wasn't a retained memory because it was a guess, and so it's not part of my normal, <laughs> anyway, my, my education. So, so the Bichon has that similarity with the Labrador. In the 16th century, Bichons appeared in France and became the darlings of royalty during the Renaissance. Legend has it that one French monarch, Henry III, dangled, this is kind of scary for a moment, a Bichon-sized basket around his neck so he and his dog would never have to part. That's a little creepy. That is. It's a basket. Kings, though, are kind of, in that era, they were just a little wacky. Yeah, I think they had some emotional issues or something there. I don't, I'm not sure, but a basket, that's the part that I'm in dangling from his neck. What's going on there? I wonder if there's a painting that they're referencing or something on that, you know, kind of thing. That'd be interesting to see. After the French Revolution, Bichons found themselves with no castle to call a home. But they quickly adjusted, finding work as circus performers and as pets in more modest circumstances. So the circuses goes all the way back to Europe, that uh, that trend for a Bichon. I thought I was thinking this whole time that Americans kind of did that, but that goes back to the European carnivals and all that. Bichon Frises came to the United States in 1956, and these merry dogs quickly charmed their way on two laps all across America. A little bit about, you know, more of the personality. The breed's name means small dog with curly hair. <laughs> Loosely translated by some as fluffy little dog. 
<laughs> do, you, do you just have to say it like that? Yeah. Fl fluffy little dog. Fluffy little dog is Bashan Frise is translation. Their reason for being is to make people smile. A soft, dense undercoat with a curly outer coat uh, should create the overall impression of a living powder puff. Appearance aside, the body underneath should be sturdy and well-balanced, ready for everything from cuddling on a sofa to zooming through an agility course. Uh, the Bichon thrives on human companionship, as so owners with full-time jobs might want to hire a dog walker or ask a neighbor to check in during the day. In fact, the dog is on the smaller side, uh, the Bichon. It would be not even close to a medium-sized dog. Um, so that person coming in, or if you're just checking in on them, you can run them around the house a couple of times and they get all the exercise they need. This is a, that one of those really good indoor dogs. If you're more of an indoor type person, the exercise can get out on there. They are though going to love going for walks and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, the fun part of living with a Bichon comes during training. Bichons love to show off and they respond well to positive training but not to harsh tactics. That would be true with any dogs. Harsh tactics don't uh, work well at all. They actually work against you in training. Attending uh, an obedience class will benefit both owner and pet. I'm all about training. That is something that I think more of us need to go to for training. Um, advance, advancing to agility makes it a game. Bichons love agility. Visit a dog show with agility entries to see how much fun they have. Bichons also love to run, and they are fast. Your first Bichon blitz will amaze you. <laughs> I love that part. That's a great. That's a great line. Yeah, I like that. So Bichons are non-shedding. They're the one of the kings of the non-shedding group, uh, and so that makes them less. They have less allergens. So if you're one of those people, I'm allergic to dogs, try out a Bichon. So for instance, in our store, we have a Bichon. We even have Bichon mixes in our store. The Bichon tends to be all white. And so a Bichon mix tends to then get some colors going in there. Um, but come in, you try them out. And what we always say, if you do have an allergic reaction, um, but you're just grossly in love with this little dog, we say, okay, go back, get your allergies under control like you normally would a couple of days later. Let us know, and we're actually going to wash that puppy because that puppy is playing with other puppies in the kennels and stuff, and so they might have some allergens from the other dogs, and so then we reintroduce them to you and see how it works. And I always say, get them up towards your face because that seems to be a really big area where, where our allergies come out, whether it's internal nasal or just skin. Uh, also, the forearms, as I as I show that proudly, I, yeah, <laughs> I raised my arms just now, and he didn't appreciate that because it was not there, a there's nothing sight. attractive of seeing poison ivy. yeah i'm not trying to shame you i'm just like i'm shamed so the bichon frise is a wonderful dog in that allergy side of things um so since it is a non-shedding dog uh realize that uh you got to send it to the groomer uh whether you like a shortcut or a long cut then determines how long between those cuts so a shortcut would be every month longer cut would be every two to three months. So that's a little bit more maintenance that you're going to need to do probably in between on those uh, longer uh, times between a grooming. You're probably going to do a little trimming in some areas just to keep things under control uh, so that it's cleaner and all that kind of stuff. But that's all pretty easy stuff. Uh, but the Bashan personality is what I like. Our little trouble child, Susie, has uh, that one's a Maltese poodle, and there is so much, the poodle side is very close to the Bichon side of things as far as origins way back when. So we see that, what they're talking about, the blitz, uh, the the really spunky attitude and all that kind of stuff. We see that in our own dog, and that is so much fun uh, when, when you have it under control. And that's where the training and all that kind of stuff comes in. So a Bichon frise. There it is. The question that I had is, so uh, this breed was mixed with two other breeds, right? Oh, it was mixed with a lot of different breeds. Yeah. Do you think that that <laughs> original dog that uh, is mixed because they like that characteristic of that dog, do you think that gives that first dog a complex going, what, am, <laughs> what, am I not good enough for you? <laughs> I mean, I, if I was that first dog, I'd be like... This this isn't fun. I, sorry, I don't have as much energy or I'm not as whatever. I just had a great visual. You know how they have cartoons and then the, somebody's talking for the dog or the 
you know, pet and all that. Sure. I just had a visual and you, you in a cartoon or a dog and your voice was the over. I have a complex about that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it was really good. I think that's a good question. And my answer, my personal answer would be they could care less. Let's go have fun is what kind of they are thinking as much. Well, when you're a radio professional such as myself, <laughs> you can turn on and off a very different voice from whenever you want to do it. Go back to your doggy voice. I like that one. Hey, am I not good enough for you? I really don't think that I should. I see. Just because I don't have as much energy? Really? See, can't you hear a cartoon or see a cartoon <laughs> with that voice on it? I think he needs to do a couple of those. So that's the Bichon. We, need a hold se we would need a hold segment. Just bring in as many pets as you possibly can into the studio. And, and then, hold them up and, and then go, what was the voice of this one? <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Robin Williams on uh, Inside the Actor's Studio working with oh, improv. He's... I mean, he was just a master. I mean, yes. he was an, a master of it. And he could take one item and just, anyway, we're off topic. But uh, I was just watching Inside the Actor's Studio with James Lipton the other day. And, and he was on. And I was like, gosh, man, that guy was... You could you wanted to emulate everything that he was doing because he was such a master. Right, right. You are. <laughs> I don't know you about do that. that. And so it is the positively positively Petland show on eight hundred KXIC every Sunday morning at nine o'clock. And uh, I'll let you move on to the net. Did you spill it all over? Not at all. I almost spilled a little cup. Well, you're uh, you almost spilled coffee all over your laptop and all over my microphones. And really quick, the worst story that I've ever heard is <laughs> you, wow. The worst, the, show. the worst story that I've ever heard about is you used to have these little stress balls that were like a neoprene mm -hmm. outside, and then they were filled with really fine silica sand. Yes. I mean, just, I mean, and you would sit there and you would right, massage them and thing, whatnot. Yeah. And the legendary story, and I don't think it was in this market or this area. I think it happened up north, maybe in Wisconsin or someplace. Anyway, there was a jock or there was a, a DJ that was playing with that over the board. And it broke, and all of that silica sand went into every single pot, and sh sh the the DJ destroyed the entire. Because I could see. Yeah, think about it. You want that you want that potentiometer or that that slide switch to be able to move smoothly, and all of that sand got into the board. So I'm always. I think he kind of lost his job on that one. I'm like helicopter parent over my board, going, "No, don't I, you touch don't it. do anything about it." So. Don't spill your coffee in my studio, please. No, I will not. <laughs> All right, on to what was, housebreaking. What was that? Did I scare you? You looked at something kind of oddly. I don't know. I think I was just adjusting. Like I was oh, I was I was adjusting from one topic to another. Gotcha. I, I was, tend to do that very quickly. <clears throat> and sometimes you, you might not be able to catch up. Yes, I was trying to catch up is really what it was. What are we oh. talking about next, Ron? <laughs> Uh, um, housebreaking uh, your dog. And this goes mainly into the potty training thing. And so if you have a puppy or you have a mature dog, I've had both situations in my own house. In fact, the reason why we, uh, Wendy and I own Petland today is because of our first dog, Callie, who is still living today. Um, when we got her at a year and a half old, she was not housebroken. The couple that had her before had a very busy young life. They had they had just recently brought a child into the world, and they were overwhelmed, and they were not getting. I didn't. We didn't know this on the front end. We found out after we got her um, uh, that she had potty training issues, and uh, so we learned how to train Callie at an adult age how to potty train, but then. Uh, through Petland, we gosh, training a puppy is so much easier. But there's a lot of the same tactics, techniques, uh, strategies that you use for both of them. So we're going to go through nine of them today. Keep me on track. So how much time do we have here, Jerry? As much as you want, about fifteen minutes. All right. So I'm going to go fairly quickly on these. Twenty one. one. 24 hour pattern. You want to establish patterns with your dog just like a parent would with their children. So they eat at a certain time, which usually means they're going to potty at a certain time as well. If you have a problem with uh, the PP -pee side of things, also regulate that. I'm not saying, you know, really refine back on the water, but I'm saying I'll, you sometimes have to take the water away at one point. Let's say you're going to be away from the house for a period of time. You might take the water away a half an hour, an hour before so that they can drain their bladder and not replenish before you leave. So 24 hour patterns are critical. Do it. What's the next one? Number two. Two. Den training is critical. Uh, that, that cage that people talk about and I don't want to put my dog in a cage. Stop it. 
look at it from a different perspective. What do you put little infants in when they go to bed? You put them in cribs. Step back. Usually. Yeah, usually. Mm-hmm. No, thanks. I'm always. trying to go through this fast, and you should just be railing. Always. always. Uh, step back. That crib can also look like a cage. So it's a perception thing. Let's change the perception that that kennel that we're putting them in is their crib, and it just has a top on it because they'll jump out. So put them in their crib, also known as a den. Oh, another analogy is not an analogy. It's a fact. Dogs are denning animals, which means they go into dens in the wild. Go search that on Google and look how tight a den is in the wild. It is extremely tight. There is no stand up uh, kind of thing. It's crouch, crouch, crouch through a hole into a very tight denning area, and they all cram together in there. So dogs are denning animals. So this environment of a kennel is so appropriate for a dog. uh, They appreciate it. They don't not like it. But make it be a fun den. You can put things in there to make it fun. So beds and stuff like that are good as long as they're not taking advantage of you, like peeing underneath the bed kind of a thing. Do you have a comment? No, I was going to say the next number. One, two, three. Three looks to the center of a Tootsie Pop. (laughs) Don't go to a barking puppy. So dogs can train you in a lot of different ways. We're going to learn about treat is the number one way to treat them. Their number one way to treat you is a bark. And so in the middle of the night, if they're barking, don't go to the kennel because you're now they're training you to come in when I bark and you will then have to deal with that training issue down the line. Uh, Same thing when you uh, are in the house and they're barking, get me out of here, get me out of here, get me out of here. Don't go to them when they're barking. If you have a very consistent barker, wait for 10. Is there a a moment of 10 seconds that you can get in there of non-barking? That's where you start, and then you lengthen it out, you know, kind of thing. So next time it's 20 seconds. They will get it because they learn from consistency. They'd only come to me when I'm quiet. And frequency, which is how they see the pattern. So make sure you're doing both of those. Was there another one? No, I was going to say frequency. Number four. Four is now getting into a tasty treat is the number one way to communicate. And I think we all kind of get that. What we don't, most of us don't get is when to give the tasty treat. So if you're trying to encourage your dog to go outside and reward them for going outside, don't give them the treat when they come back into the house because you just trained them to come back into the house, which by the way, if your dog runs away, give them a treat right when they walk in the door because then they'll well, go, oh, I want to get back in that door so I get the treat. I'm not going to run away because there's no treat when I walk, walk, run away. So, But getting back to potty training, you have to put the treat to their nose while they're doing their business, whether it's a pee or a poo. It's got to be at their nose while they're still doing it so that they know, oh, when I do this, they put it, they give me a treat and I like that and I want to do that again. But again, consistency re- at the beginning for sure and frequency helps them uh, see the patterns and want to do it again. So it's not like it happens within one try. You got to do this over a period of time. And there are some stubborn dogs out there that don't quite get it. Just keep on going because those dogs, when they, it's tough to learn for them, but when they learn it, they, they usually stick with it then and they never stop. So that's importance for a tasty, a tasty treat is the number one way to communicate, but it has to be given immediately when they're doing whatever you want them to do. Number five, empty the bladder before bedtime. So if you have that uh, little one that wee wee's in the middle of the night, then you got to take Uh, take action on that just like we would a child and remove the water right before bedtime. So uh, we had a little Susie, the trouble child. She was a pee pee pants for sure. And she kept on doing that. And we're like going, well, she gets it, man. She, when she's out there, she was looking at my pocket for the treat. Uh, She knows that she's going to get it out there, but in the middle of the night, she just can't hold it. Um, You can be one of those that maybe at the beginning, goes to them when they're quiet still, let them out. So don't wait till they bark and then go to them. Let them out in the middle of the night. Give them a little break if you feel the necessary necessary to do it, necessity to do that. Um, but over time, they have bladder control like ours where they'll be able to hold it. But even myself, and I, I hear Jerry has a little wetting pants issue too. Excuse me? 
uh, that you have to cut the water before, you know, an hour or two before bedtime. Whatever works for your dog, adjust it appropriately for that. So empty the bladder before bedtime. Who have you been talking to? <laughs> to know these things? Yeah. Number six, <laughs> moving right along. That was, that was like, oh, a question mark. I like it. Stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it is very important. We've said it so many times on this show because 50% of the people that walk into our store, Petland Iowa City, don't know what this is, even though they've had dogs all their life. When a dog or a cat urinates, they leave a mark every single time. So if they do it outside, the mark is outside, and you want it outside. Uh, you, uh, you know this inherently because when you walk by the lamppost or the fire hydrant or that bush or whatever it is, they sniff and then they urinate. That's how dogs, they go, is, do I have the permission to pee? Yeah. Now, if they urinate in the house, the permission to pee is in the house. And you got to get it out because even though you might have this well-trained dog, if they have an accident because you let them go too long, because they were at the veterinarian and there was some you know, treatment that they were a little delirious when they came back, whatever it was that caused them to do that urination, now there's a mark. So even a good dog is now going to have problems with potty training. You have to remove the mark. Chlorine doesn't work. Detergents don't work. Soap doesn't work. You have to have the product with the appropriate enzyme in it. Uh, the Petland, we have a, our own brand, Petland Stain and Odor Remover with an enzyme in it, actually has the bacteria in it that produces the enzyme, so it's fresh, that will remove that mark so that the permission to pee is removed. You got to apply it appropriately. You got to use enough of it. It's not a spray product. It's a glug glug product. Uh, and you got to work it in. If it's a carpeting with padding and wood underneath, it's got to get in contact with everything. So sometimes you have to do it a second or third time because you didn't get it through everything. So if it didn't work the first time, use your stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it. Just use it more broadly and more abundantly to get through to all of the urinary uh, accidents that occurred. So Petland stain and odor remover with an enzyme uh, remover in it is very important to remove marks from within the house. What kind of product is it? A glug glug product? Yes. Yeah, I, it's Can the you, best. You, Here, people will take this product and they'll like kind of sprinkle it, sprinkle it. Or if it has a spray on it, they'll spray, spray. It doesn't work that way. This thing's got to get into where the urine is. And that's why it's a glug glug product. You can't go lean on I it. I couldn't let that pass. That had to be a follow up because I did not know what you meant. Number seven. Seven. House breaking aids are a benefit. Okay, so we just talked about how to remove a mark. We've got a product that has the mark in it. So you don't have to necessarily have your own dog's mark. Just like when you go past the fire hydrant, sniffs over there, it smells somebody else's mark, and then they'll urinate. We have that mark in a bottle. And so what you can do if you wanted to specifically have them trained to go in a section of your yard, you're going to use this product over there. You're going to pre-treat it over there. Spray, 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 spray. And then let your dog go in the area and you might have, you're going to have to reapply this type of product, uh, you know, on a daily basis to get them going in a certain section of the yard. So maybe it's that corner of the yard that, hey, if it gets brownie and all that kind of stuff over there, I'm not, you know, too, uh, uh, um, keen. I'm not, I'm not upset about it. Oh, you're not. Okay. Yeah. I I, it's okay. And, and I don't have to pick up the poop if it just goes in that section of the yard. Cause all the kids play in the other section of the yard. Yeah. That kind of a thing. So this is great for that. Or I believe you used it for when, didn't you do a potty training in the house with how, uh, house breaking pads or pee pads? I don't think I, I have, have a memory uh, saying that you brought this out. In fact, I was like, oh, okay, you did that. I think we use those more towards her final weeks. Oh, okay. So that's what that was, was going on. I think that's, so you can, so there's the pee pads yeah. out there um, and you can spray this on the pee pad. So the mark is on the pad. So your dog then sniffs the pad and says, go, this is for indoor training kind of a thing. Oh, by the way, we're about to bring in pee pads into our store and it give me another, I think it's going to be a month or so before we get them in there. Holy cow. Economical is all I'm saying. We're, we're going to have really cool prices on our pee pad. So the, you'll see stack outs and stuff. So if you're in that market, just know that we will 
and uh, be the go-to place. We already have a good price on the ones that we have, but we just blew the lid off of that one. So housebreaking aids are a way to get them to pee exactly where you want them to go. Number eight, develop patterns right for you and your puppy. So we've talked a little bit about you know cutting the water and all that kind of stuff, but all the rest of your patterns as well. Parents, we know this with our children. We know that the, the kids thrive on knowing what's going to happen next. I know I'm going to get a potty break right after I eat. Well, I was actually talking about a dog there, but that could be your child. Maybe your child is, is I got to go potty before I eat kind of a thing. So establish those kind of patterns. If you notice the dog has an issue, huh? how can I change my pattern to address that issue so it won't happen again? So that potting before or after you eat kind of a thing. Like here, I think a lot of us know with our dogs, if I let them outside right when they wake up, they might urinate, but they don't poop. But right after they eat, they poop. Did you, I, I've known I, that. It's been a while since I've had my puppy, so I would have probably agree with that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a magic thing. And I think it just is getting the digestive system going and all that. And, and so let them, so in our house, I know they got full bladders, but I also know that they really want to eat. And so, and I know that after they eat, they're going to get done with both businesses outside. So we got them trained. Now a new puppy, you might have to do, you know, go out first uh, and then come back in. In fact, uh, for a uh, one key thing with using a den in the morning with a new puppy, this will get a little better in the future, but don't let them just walk outside the den because in the wild, right when they get outside the den is outside. They urinate immediately. So to stop that from happening inside your house, open the kennel door and pick the puppy up and walk straight outside and put them down using all those other techniques. Use the house breaking aids to spray where you want them to go. Uh, you have a treat at the ready because when they do their urination or poop, uh, you want that treat in their nose right when they're doing it. So develop patterns right for you and your puppy. You know what? I just did nine within eight. So we're and, done. And number nine. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what was number? I, went, I was writing them down. So develop patterns was eight. What was nine? it was uh, here on my sheet? I have uh, more information on our DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> but I gave you two in there and you actually <laughs> um, lifting your dog up uh, right when you open the kennel, especially a puppy or let's say your dog. Hey, he urinates every time I open the kennel or he runs and then urinates. The, the way to stop that is lift them up and take them outside right away so that they do their business outside. But make sure you have that, that treat and the housebreaking aid at the ready. Go to the live YouTube uh, stream and I want you to check out the reaction that Ron gave me after I interrupted him after number six when I asked what glug glug was. You gave me this look like... <laughs> and if you could have seen Would me you, it, not, not. it was a silent chaotic what are you doing why are you interrupting me and i didn't interrupt you after number four with the tasty treat and you were talking about giving the treat outside rather than when the dog comes yeah. inside you said if your dog's running away and you reward oh, that's them, another tip you reward you know you want to know what my tip is to catch my i used to do this with my cock spaniel i would and love to my poodle would do it also if if uh, he ever got out Let's say they're in the neighbor's yard. Well, what's the first reaction that you're going to do? You're chasing after that dog. Now that dog is thinking that it's playing. Yes. So what do you do? You run the other way. And your dog responded to that? You better believe me. Every single time Kicks, the Cocker Spaniel, would get out into the street or something like that. I was like, hey, let's go play. And she would be on my heels trying to nip at me. Right. It sounds, yeah, I see, that was a game. So I think the precursor to that is you've played games with that dog where you yeah. run away kind of a thing. And that's what you, and, and you use the dog's characteristic <laughs> of squirrel. Yeah. So that dog was on one track. I'm going to run over here because I see something. And then you went squirrel. Yep. <laughs> and it went, oh, okay. And it, and it at least worked with my dog. It's just one of those things where sometimes you see, and, and then, and then the dog gets loose. And what do you do? <clears throat> you're upset because you're late for work. Oh, yeah. Or you're upset. So now you're, so now the dog's agitated happy. that you're agitated and you, I'm running away from you now. And you need to kind of 
rein it in going, hey, let's go inside, yeah. smile <laughs> and clench your teeth at the same time. But anyway, nine great tips or eight really. Uh, oh, I think we actually had like 12 or 13. Yeah. So great tips for establishing it. And, and one that you've talked about before that I know has worked for me is the den training. Uh, oh, yeah. I think that that's probably one of the most important pieces. And it does relate back to puppies are like infants. They need to be trained and assisted like infants. And I, I like the correlation between, uh, and, and I don't think you said it this time. Maybe you did. Use the divider. Oh, my goodness. We didn't even say divider. I, I don't yeah. think that you did, but hey, that was what worked for our Dane. Okay. So most people buy the den, the kennel, uh, and they get it home and they go, hey, there's this extra part not attached to anything. Honey, go throw this thing away. It was extra. You know, kind of everything. Well, that was meant to be, and because there's no instructions in these kennels, by the way. We don't have two dogs. We yeah. only have yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> you use that in the kennel to actually, you buy a kennel for the adult version of your dog. So you don't have to keep on buying bigger kennels. These are the wired kennels. These are not those plastic travel kennels. Yep. People get those too mistaken. So these are the wired ones. So now you tighten it way up so that the dog can only do a turnaround and uh, and and sit down. So if they urinate or poop, they got to sit in it. And that is a dog training characteristic that is also in the wild. It happens the same way. So don't feel bad. Don't say, oh, that's cruel. Just say, I'm talking with them in their language and use that divider to do that. And I think that if you look at it from... Listen, I've had dogs my entire life, and I have had a lot of experiences with them. And just like you, you know certain things that work, and you're mm -hmm. always open to those new tips. But if you're if you're the type of person that's saying, oh, gosh, I know because this didn't work with one of my dogs, I think that that's the wrong approach. You, right. you got to stay consistent on, on Oh, and I'll tell you, the testing. Internet is horrendous. I mean, when I read what's on the Internet on training, this is the number one and all that. The stuff that people put down are a lot of those. It worked for my dog, so right. it should work for every dog. And then you go, but wait, it's just like how you trained your dog to come back to you if it's running in the street. There was something that happened before that that made your dog respond to that. So you read that stuff with a lot of, uh, of uh, question marks, scrutiny, scrutiny, uh, because you're not getting the whole story. You can't put it out there like that. That's why when you come into our store and you say, I have a problem with potty training my five-year-old dog, can you help me? Uh, we then say, well, tell me about what's happening. When does it urinate? Well, it urinates in that one spot in my house. So it just it keeps on going there. And, and now he actually now has another spot in the house too that he's going. That's that marking thing. And it got so comfortable going in the house that now it's, <laughs> it's making some more areas to go because it's a little more convenient. You need to clean that area. And in fact, if they've been doing it for a while, you got to clean it, re-clean it, re-clean it to really get it saturated in there and get that all cleaned out. So there a lot it is. of great fun tips. This is what we do at Petland. And the final piece, did you have treats or something? It was the little gimme. So now I think everybody gets it that, well, we already got it, that treats are a great way. The dogs love them. But let's use them to help us uh, train our dog. So little gimmies is our number one selling treat in our store. And why? Because it's a very attractive treat that it was made to be very attractive. Two, uh, it's nutritious for the dog. So now you've got something that's a, you know, it's a win-win kind of a thing. Um, they're soft. And what I do with my own dog is they are little. They're little gimmies. They're the little nuggets. They're soft. And so I only grab one when I go out for training. When you're training a dog, you're not filling their belly up. They're not looking for quantity. They're looking for taste. And so I break it in two. I got a pee one and a poo one. And then when they do one, I give it that one, but I still have the other one. So it's just nice and convenient. You can make them go a long way as well. They're very economical on top of that. So Lil Gimme's is the treat of the week. Next week, we're going to go back to the lickety stick. Ooh, I don't know about the lickety stick. Uh, ooh. I'm not going to try it. No, after the... Oh, my goodness. No. I don't want to go there on that one. Nope, nope not going to do it. I don't after... know, but there's a challenge out there. Nope. I learned my lesson. Sometimes this is going to taste good, though. The dogs love it. I, I, Bitter works that we tried last I had dog, time. Dog biscuits before, and well, I, they're just bland. Yeah, I mean, there's there. Do you try all of your products? No, not all of them. <laughs> but 
quite a few of them. When I always hear in our store, if you can't tell, we like to have fun. In our store, when the rep comes in, you know, and, and they're saying, if you can't tell that we like to have fun, we're not trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when the rep comes in, they go, and it's made in a human grade uh, factory. I go, okay, well, then I want to see you eat it. Uh, it's kind of like one of those challenge, you know, kind of things. And if they don't, if they eat it, I'll go, I'll eat it, I'll eat it too then. And w the ones that don't, I'm sorry, you're just not into your product. I want to see a little interaction here with your product and everything. But I'm telling you, those that like they pop one right then and there. I'm like, you know your product. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to pop one too and then go, oh. <laughs> nice little challenge. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? We are Petland, Iowa City. We're over at the Marketplace Mall right across the parking lot from Lucky's Market. If you haven't tried that, that's a, a nice grocery store. And I'm hearing big news is coming to Marketplace Mall. We're getting another massive store coming in there. They really are working hard on trying to fill out some of the some of the larger areas and some of the areas that have uh, been depleted over yeah. the years. And I love I, I've loved our landlords all the way through. Uh, all of our landlords have been really good and really good to us and and really good to work with. Um, I like the current one that we've got, uh, and they man, they are worker bees as far as getting things done. So that one's coming in. And then we're now, they approached us and said, you ready for a remodel? And we said, yes. So that's going to be coming our way too. Exciting. So Petland, Iowa City, come uh, visit our store today. Play, have fun. Uh, we're open at noon until six today. And then every other day we're open from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Nail trims, buy 10, get one free on all dog and cat food. Take advantage of all that. PetlandIowaCity.com. You can check out all of the dogs that are there. Ron, always a pleasure talking to you. I hope you have a fabulous week. It's going to be a little bit cooler, but uh, yeah. yeah, I know. I'll see you. Uh, Bring some hot air back in. I like hot air. I'll see you later on, like Thursday or something like that. It sounds good. <laughs> Take care. It's the Positively Petland Show every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock on Iowa City's News and Sports and Pet Station 800 KXIC. Have a great week, everybody. See ya.